Now we are muted. Now we are muted. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the muted. Now we are muted. Uh, uh, uh. Cheer me up now. Now we unmuted, I'm about to be one of the best to ever ever do it Sip 7 in the building, you already knew it Roll on my sleeve, so let's get to it I'm walking with my purpose, I'm walking in my vision So that means I'm just a man on this mission I'm just a comedian that happens to be Christian So let that beat drop, give them what they missing Yeah, uh, now we unmuted Now we unmuted Without further ado, this woman has been on BET What's up, Barry? <laughs> Hi. There we are. I made yeah. it in. You made it. You <laughs> as, <laughs> look, I've been trying to get on. I couldn't figure it out. I you couldn't figure it out? Okay, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to see you. So wait a minute. Let, let, let me give you the proper introduction. Okay. Has been kicked out of 17 churches. <laughs> <laughs> kicked out of 17 churches. She has been on BT American Gangsta going for season two. Vlad TV. And just by every social media source with her story that you can think of. Y'all, give it up for my girl, my friend now, Miss Parion Roberts, y'all. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Hi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm ecstatic. I'm happy. I am happy. Oh, so am good I. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you all. All right. Yeah, this is my co-host, Miss yeah. Up here, you know, she's gonna be helping me. Yes, out. How you How doing? Doing? You I've doing? been watching your BET Plus special. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's a beast. <laughs> so, what I was heard, let's, let's get right into it. It was, it was a beast. I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. So, let's get right into it. Um, tell us about your upcoming. Um, you upbringing or the show or what? Yeah, what your, your, your upbringing, your child. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh oh, I'm sliding. Hold on. That's all right. You good? Yeah. Oh, oh Lord. Okay, I can't move. I do a lot of moving, so I'm knocking it yeah, down. I'm good, sorry. <laughs> okay. So my upbringing um, was here in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, in the '60s, and mm -hmm. I was born in '64 um, when all the civil rights movement and everything was actually going on so by the time I got um old enough to know what it was all about all of that was was pretty much over um so um but I had a um I had a real I did have a good childhood I thought mm -hmm. right um despite the um the abuse that was that my mother endured um, they never beat us, so I didn't never think that we were ever abused. Um, so you don't got actually, every now and then, not much. No, not really. We got fussed at, but not we didn't get whippings and beatings and stuff like that. You know, my mother right. threatened us a lot. My mother, if any whipping went on, it would be my mom, but and that she did a lot of uh yelling and promising that she was going to That threat threat. works sometimes, though. <laughs> yeah. And it's it worked. A little threat. It, it, yeah, a little threat. And, and we were pretty good with the threat. So we uh, didn't push her to the limit. But yeah, um, I, threat, yeah. huh? I say the black mama threat, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was good All at that. All you got to do is jump at him, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and see, she worked for the military, too. So she had a lot of that in her, too. So, um, but anyways... My mom and father is the ones that had, you know, they're, they're fighting and stuff. So um, I never felt like we were abused because, um, because we never was beaten or anything like that. And, but uh, I realize now that we really was living in an abusive home and a lot of that um, kind of like rubbed off on, on me and my brothers as well. 
Um, but other than that, um, they had us in good schools. I went to uh, a private Catholic school and really? um, did. <laughs> hey, okay, all right, okay. I, I, yeah, I went to, uh, it was called St. Joseph at the time and now it's Holy Spirit. They changed the name to Holy oh, Spirit. Oh, really, they said Holy Spirit? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. See, I didn't <laughs> you go? to see Calvin and came <laughs> up. See, they, nah, they shot yeah. the church now. Nah. See, they didn't came up. They said Holy right. Spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah they said Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, um, I, went, I went there um, my first four years of school and I begged my mom to put me in private school because I didn't like the uniform. And when I found out the uh, public schools wore their regular clothes, which was my play clothes. And um, I, I just, I, I wanted I wanted to go. I got tired of the uniforms basically. And she let me, you know, and so she changed me. And that's, I, I had a, a difficult time at first with public schooling uh, because the kids, you know, they made fun of me because I was tall. And you know, um, taller than than the average, you know, fifth grader or whatever. Right. And I was so far advanced because the Catholic school, you know, always had you. Well, I don't know about now, but then we was all always like a grade, grade and a half ahead. And uh, really? so I, oh yeah, oh yeah, the stuff that. Well, them uh, private went, schools got the good stuff. Yeah, when I went to public school. The, the material that they were teaching me, I had already had like in the second and third grade. And so um, so then that was difficult because at the time they didn't have schools that you could advance to if you was already advanced that they put you in like they do now. Right. And so it's like I had to come down to the level of where everyone else is because that's where I am. And um and so and they picked on me, you know, and I had, you know, got into a couple of fights, which I had never been in before, you know, going to uh, private school right. and, you know, stuff like that. But I overcame all that little school stuff in, um, in my high school. And then I went to college and uh, I went to J.O. Johnson High School. Uh, give it up for our school. They yeah, just tore Johnson. it down. Yeah, we, we know what's yeah. up with J.O. Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll be down there in October. I got to do a uh, show. So I'll be down there in October. Well, they just tore our school down and oh. a lot of riffraff. Uh, yeah, oh. with that. So, yeah. Um, oh, you can't tear down a school? I know they did. And so wow. and that's something that's going on right now. It's in the news um, uh, because they tore it down. And Johnson actually was a test school. And it, it was because when they built Johnson, it was to see if uh, black and whites could go to school together. So it was actually a test school. And, um, and it turned out really well because Johnson High School has turned out a lot of great uh, students and, and uh, people. Um, and so it is it, very hurtful. And, you know, so we did, we still, um, debate uh talking about that because they actually tore it down this this week so, so how in god green earth did you go from catholic school to the, how, how how did you transition into drugs <laughs> well catholic <laughs> school <laughs> well you know that's no, probably no. where it was at no, no. I, oh no Don't do that too. No, actually no 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 not during that time uh <laughs> Um, no, I didn't get into drugs until I, I had completed high school. I was in college. And um, and then I didn't just go off into it. Because the only time I had ever seen drugs was in a, a book and reading about it. And the guy that I started dating once I got to college, oh. uh, later on, um, we, uh, yeah, oh, wait, so I mean, I started so while she's in her education. So you got into a Bobby <laughs> Witness situation? Uh, I guess you know. No. no. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no, say that. that, that <laughs> no, no, not actually. We, um, uh, I was going to Alabama AM at the time and, um, and working. And, um, he, he, he was always into, you know, hustling and stuff. And, um, so uh, a few years after we was together, a couple of years, that's when 
we decided to go, you know, try out the marijuana. He said, you know, he, he brought it to me and he was telling me that, you know, people was making a lot of money. You know, some of the people in the project, a couple of them, not a lot, but a couple of people that he knew, older guys that was making a lot of money in marijuana. So when we started, we started with one of, you know, some of my little paychecks and stuff and we lost. And, uh, <laughs> And so we tried it again after I made a little more money and he made a little more money. We tried it again. We lost a few times before we actually yeah. um, got the niche. But you uh, heard how or, she said we, but it was her paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure, listen, listen. This lady's in hey, school well, minding her business. That, we ain't doing no man bashing today. All right. We ain't here doing no man bashing today. We gonna let Miss okay? Harry on tell her story though. Uh, but check this out. But I just need you to right. remember it started with a man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Sorry, Miss Terry. Now let's talk That's about okay. the man. Let's talk about your dad. Your dad before we get into the to the drugs. Now you okay? Okay. I saw where okay. you, you you said that your dad shot it at you, shot at you and your brother one time. Yeah, he did. He um because we, when we got a little older, uh, well, me because um my brother's six years behind me, but um I got tired of him every weekend that he wanted to go out and because we he leave on Fridays, we wouldn't see him again until Sunday. Oh, wow. And so, and he say, well, he gambled a lot and you know, they had gambling stuff back then all night, all weekend or whatever. And he shot pool, he was a pool shark also, but he also like had a lot of women. And so when he wanted to go on Fridays, and leave, well, that's when the argument started. It, it usually man. was just on, on Fridays. You know, Monday through Thursday, we was fine. No fights, no nothing. Everything was great. But when Friday come, and, but he was good about oh. this though, because he, he had his own construction business. And so when he get paid, when he get his check on Friday, he pay his fellows, and then he give my mom money. But then he want to leave. And so that's when the problems come. Well, and so that's when the problems come. She just said it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, no, a, a man work hard as he did. You know what I'm saying? He wanted some little leisure time. He's always around the kids and his wife. Ain't Try no, to clean no, it up. No, I'm going to need you to tell her testimony. Man, man, look, no. man, come on, man. No. Man, some food, no. Man. <laughs> mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. And um, sometimes my mom used to take us um when we were young she used to put us in the car and late at night with cover and all that looking for him and mm. uh, a couple of times she's found him and um my mom had bought a 38 and uh when she caught up with him she shot at him she shot at him in one of the projects that they no. tore down council court <laughs> yeah and no. um and so um she actually put a gun on him one day in the yard and uh, he took my brother, Javon's, and put him in front of him like a shield to keep my mom from shooting him. Shooting this is your him. father. My dad, yeah. Our dad. Your biological yeah. father. Yes. Oh. And so, so then, mm. um, then when we got, when, when I got a little older, a um, couple of years after all of that, a few years, it was two or three years later, and so he was he was about to jump on our mom and he had already jumped on her a time before and hit her in the head with that pickle jar and uh bust her head. Oh Lord. No, okay. you and, bust, <laughs> and bust her head. Um and she thought she was sweating. And in fact, it hit gash it had gashed her head and she had to have stitches. And uh, it was blood and um on our living room furniture. And so after that, when he uh, tried to jump on her, that's when I jumped on him. And then Javon come along and he tried, he was young, he grabbed him by the leg or whatever. And, and so by us doing that, he, when he slung me off, he always kept a little gun, a little uh, 22 in his pocket. And so when he reached for it, because we knew our dad, we knew he was shit, you know, we done some things. And so we took off the running and we ran outside. And at the time it was, we had huge pine trees in our house, in our yard. We hid up under it. And my dad literally came out the house shooting at us, but he didn't know where we were because it was dark, but we were under the tree. And um, oh, when, he, when he left, we ran down the street uh, to a neighbor's house and uh, my friend's mother 
passed out. Uh, I had called the police and walked us back to the house. And um, but my mom, he didn't, he didn't get a chance to jump on it at that time. And then after that, um, he, he didn't hit her anymore because I guess he thought, hey, they're growing up. And, you know, I don't know what he thought, but and he, your mother he stayed. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, your, your father was a true definition. I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. Truly. Wow. Man, that's true. He, wow. he shot my youngest brother uh, later right. on. He so did B my, not work? Uh, no, no, no. This, this was a, this is my youngest brother. He shot him when he was like 16 in the leg. Um, well, and so we just skipped <laughs> over the belt weapons. Like, there's I mean, so I, many you other know, I, I threatened my kids before, you know, hey, look, I choke you. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I, I you chop I your shoe to you behind like a belt. Me, but they go and do it, man. God, don't. Yeah, he did. Wow. He did. He literally shot him. But he shot at me and Javon, and he never shot at Deron, but our youngest brother, Jeremy, that's who he, he shot him in the leg. Uh, wow. he, because Jeremy had went to work with him, and um, I don't know what happened, but Jeremy had a bad temper too. But anyways, um, he said that Jeremy was trying to take his money. He will take his money. And so he, he uh, and hit him with a stick or something. But anyway, he shot him. He shot him in the front yard and he didn't get any time. They gave him um, um, anger management class. Anger management. What year was this? Yeah. This was shooting at people is angry. 90. It was in the 90s. It was in the 90s? Yeah. So while Michael and yeah. Chicago Bulls win the championship, your dad out there shooting his kids. <laughs> wow. I ain't got time for this today. I ain't got time for this today. No. Wow. no, man. No, if anybody's watching and listening, don't 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 shoot kids. I understand. No, no, don't, don't do that now. <laughs> no, actually, no, 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 no. Um, but no, he he did. When he wow. went to court, they gave him anger management. And uh once he completed that, they uh took that off his records. So, so how was your relationship with your dad after that, growing up as a young adult? Like did it change throughout the years? Oh yeah. Me and my dad was was really close. Um, you know, um even before he passed, he passed away uh in 2020. We were really close. Um I, I'm the one that would take my dad to the doctors and, and um, see after my dad, he, you know, when he had got sick and stuff. And um, so, yeah, we, I mean, we, we were close and my dad loved me, you know, um, he loved us. It was just the boys. He just didn't have, <laughs> he wasn't that close to, but he was really, really close to me. Um, so still your dad is great. That's a, huh? You was a dad's girl. But, yes. Wow. Yes, I was. Even though you were what, the almost, only girl out of out of the four. I'm the only girl and the oldest. And so. Wow. Girl. All right. So you went to college. You met this guy. He introduced you to marijuana. And after that, you 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 had some failures of selling. You know, you never sell me none. But I just want people to know that I ain't never smoked with her. I might, I might the day after that story about that issue, that kind of got me teary out a little bit. But uh, <laughs> you didn't sell all that great, but then you got good at it. And then and then after that, what transpired? Because you, you became like the, the, the baddest out there. Well, what transpired was um, when he when he he shot a guy and he ended up going to uh, prison. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had to, because I was always in the back. Uh, no one never really saw me, but occasionally riding with him through the projects or something like that. But mostly uh, they didn't really see me. And But I was the one that was um, literally cutting it up, weighing it up. So I learned all of that um, just by dealing with it and learning, learning how to... Uh, distribute even though I wasn't the one distributing and uh, when he went to prison then I had to go out in the projects in different places and collect money from the guys that he had fronted it to and some of them paid and some of them reneged and when they reneged then I just 
made an example out of one or two of them because I was always told, my dad and he always told me, you know, you make an example out of one. You don't have to worry about nobody else. And so, so and your daddy's shooting thing. skills came in handy. <laughs> <laughs> when, you said, when you said example, what kind of example did you do? I, I, did. I, oh, I, shot, I shot a guy in the leg because he wouldn't pay me. He just, he told me he wasn't giving me a damn thing. And I said, oh, yes, you are. And he said, no, he wasn't. And so I just pulled the gun. My dad always told me once I pull it, shoot it. So I wasn't going to pull it. It didn't shoot it. And so uh, I shot didn't. him in the leg. And at that time, you could shoot someone below the belt. And that's like was a misdemeanor. It, it, you do like 30 days if you did go to jail. Now to it's attempted murder. Great <laughs> judge over here in Polk County. Great judge. No, You're no it, 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 it is. It, it, it's. <laughs> It's a felony now, and it's also attempted murder. So I wouldn't advise no one to do that um, wow. this day and time. But uh, at the time, that's what that's the law. That's what it was. So you know, as long as you didn't shoot anyone above the belt, you was. Uh -huh. And um, but anyways, he he paid me, and then everyone else fell in 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 place, and you know. Um, and I did it for a while. I, 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 I sold the marijuana for a while, but it just wasn't the money that I was really looking for. And um, so I said, well, you know what? I'm going to go back to school and get my engineering degree and I can make the money that I want. Right. And so I, <laughs> I went back to school. I let it go. And um, I ran into um, Po Boy on the street and I was just driving and he flagged me down and he, he told me he had, it. well, let me go back. Paul boy is champ's cousin. Oh, okay. And All right. Oh, Paul okay. boy was young, uh, younger than either one of us. He was his, his youngest brother's age, one of his younger brother's age. And so they all, all those little boys used to come to the house. All and, the boys. Um, yeah, and, and they ultimately, Another boy. they ultimately, ultimately, most of them became um, my crew as when they got older. But when they were little boys, you know, they played football in the street and everything. And then when they got, got a little older, they started going stealing and doing stuff like that. Oh. And they would walk. And so I decided to take them so they wouldn't have to walk and get caught or anything and so I would take them but they would have to split everything that they got with me and so um that's how that's how uh you know me and me and Paul boy became close because all the little boys was close to me you mm -hmm. know because I was you know helping them they was doing their thing and I literally was helping them really Oh, to not get caught. But um, so anyway, that's how Po' Boy came. That's how I knew him anyway. And so when he got older, which he was about, uh, he was 17. He was 17 at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that he had it going on in, in Bola Terrace selling uh, cocaine. And I told him he didn't because I didn't think he had even seen no cocaine. But he had. And so he said, I do, I have it going on. I got some guys working for me too. And I was like, okay, right. And, but anyways, one day I said, okay, I will. But I didn't go then. I, uh, one day my money was getting really low. And so I said, okay, let me go out here and see what, what, what Po' Boy talking about. So I went Wait out to the project. Minute, <laughs> I, I'm so special now. The money. So where in this story were you modeling? Because I saw in your- All the time, special, all the time. All the time. JC oh, Penny, so the, the money wasn't time. good from that? No, no, nothing oh. was as see, good. I'm trying to save her from the boys in the story. I'm, I'm no, trying to hold no. you back in the well, see, I model, Yeah, I started modeling when I was nine. And I did all of those. See, I don't know. It, it's like weird. But I, I, I modeled during my drug selling. Um, that was my company. Oh, y'all got to see it now. Y'all got to see it. <laughs> That that you was know that JC Penny magazine. We tried to be like those <laughs> yeah. models. <laughs> oh yeah, and so I started with JC Penny's and Sears, and then I was on Parisian board. Wait a minute, yeah. you was in JC Penny's? I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> <laughs> My mom used to give me the book. 
as you say, oh, Lord, for Christmas, Christmas time. I'm right <laughs> yes. And circle what you want out the blue. Yeah, yeah, but see, I right. made it to the oh, toys yeah. because I was taking the cross section. Oh, Lord. <laughs> see, that's what happens. But, yeah. The boys get distracted. Hey, Ms. Roberts. How you doing? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> so the modeling really wasn't working out so we had to get but out I, I did that book. anyway well I, wow. I I did that even though I was selling drugs whenever I wasn't on the streets or whatever that's what I was doing and and I did a lot of beauty pageants too or everywhere and so and I really did that the beauty pageants because because I was winning and I would win like 10,000, 25,000, you know, that was for the money. But basically I was doing that for cop money. You know what I'm saying? So I, but I was winning and then it's comfort to me is to model and stuff like that. That's my comfort zone. And so even though I was selling drugs, I was still uh, modeling whenever I wasn't on the streets. When, once the guys and stuff started selling for me and stuff, that's what I would be doing in my pastime if I wasn't at school, because I also went to school this entire time too now. So I, I still, even though I, I went to a and uh, <laughs> three different times, um, uh, and I, I uh, went to Calhoun for nails, uh, cosmetology and nails. So I graduated doing that. Wow. So I started doing nails yeah, too. Nice. I did nails for 18 years. So um and then I, um, I went back to school and I got my certification as a nurse assistant. So I did that for five years. And, <laughs> and so- yes, uh, uh, We got an engineer. <laughs> we got a cosmetologist. <laughs> we got a beauty model. And now we done, we I, done bumped in the pole board. So yeah, so you said I got a lot oh, of jobs. Uh, yeah, and I did taxes yeah. for seven yeah. years too. Taxes, so was, See, taxes. Uh, so. I ain't yeah. fired mine yet, so, so I, I might have to holler at you when the show is over. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I and I and I actually would. I've I've been to school. I was going to school the entire time that I was doing that. I was in somebody's school uh, doing something, learning something, and I modeled all that. I still did, and it, it it never stopped. And um, and so you know, if it did stop, it was just a little temporary for maybe uh, a, maybe a month or two maybe a year but nothing major and um, so then when I got with Po Boy and he showed me um, the pot at that time it was powder cocaine and um, and he showed me how to take notebook paper and turn them into bindles and and that's what you used to put the cocaine in and then we used to keep them in in rice in medicine bottle and so he showed me all of that and I was like, oh, wow. Okay, so, and then you did, it wasn't a whole lot of drugs. Like marijuana is bulky and it's a lot. You know, you could not have a lot and it's still bulky. Right. And, but with that, it's not, and it's easier to get rid of. And so I was like, okay, 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 I, I can do this. And so when it starts selling, I said, I like this, okay. And so I started hanging more in the projects and um, learning more and getting more familiar with, with the people in Bold Terrace at that time. And, um, and so that's, that's how that started. And so it was, went on for a couple of years and then he got killed like two years after all of that. Is that before he um, got killed? Yeah, he got so killed. Got um, hey, he, it, this was a girl dispute. It wasn't even no, oh, it wasn't Lord. even a drug thing. Um, oh, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Well, what, what, Tim, yeah. What you got to say, Tim? What, what you got to say? The first time something is happening based off of a woman. But guess what? It was still two men that was beeping. So let's just leave it there. Okay. I'm just saying. It was still men. We're going to yeah. do no man bashing today. We're going to do that. Well, see, see Po Boy was, was known for, he was young, but he, he, he was, and he was very, it was, everybody was skinny back then. Wasn't right. nobody big or nothing. But he could literally hit a man and knock him out, and they was just scared of him. And um, so, <laughs> and so the guy that shot him, he was an older guy or anything like that. He shot him because he was afraid of him. But he really didn't shoot to kill him because what happened was he had two different bullets in him. He had 
the bullet that came from that guy's gun hit him like right in here. But the bullet that hit him in the back of the head was a 357 Magnum. And the only ones that carried that gun was the police at that time and me. I, and you, time. okay, so you, <laughs> so so Tom, let yeah. me make sure now, now, now you said that you had something to do with old boy getting shot up. Now you, oh no, I would, oh absolutely not, I wasn't there, but um, that's that's the gun I had. That that's the gun that I used to carry all the time was a three fifty seven Magnum with hollow Magnum. point, yeah. gold 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 tip hollow uh, hollow point, hollow um, point, yeah, because he spread out in the body <laughs> when he was doing that, right. Up. That was my that good. And, yeah, and, and, and uh, Po' Boy had a sawed-off shotgun, uh, a pump shotgun, which I had bought for him. Um, that's what he used to carry. But most of the time, he didn't really carry a gun. He just like he liked to fight, fight, literally with his yeah. fists. And um, this boy, he went. He didn't even have a gun. He went. <laughs> went to the hotel and everything and this boy just started shooting he didn't even he didn't even give him a chance you know what i'm saying so uh he didn't have a gun so you literally killed him and he was he was not armed because he didn't really carry a gun um uh, like that and he hadn't shot nobody you know what i'm saying he would right, he would right. beat him up but he didn't shoot nobody and um so he didn't deserve that I, you know, but that's what happened. So after, after and, he died, after then after he died, he died he took then over. his guys, yeah, his boys, because see, um, when I was out there with them, it was just me. So I'm just hustling the street, just like them, you know what I'm saying? But I'm doing my own thing. And um, so when he died, then his guys, they didn't know how to leave. You know, they were basically followers because, you know, they followed him, did what he told them to do. So then that's when I stepped in and, you know, I took care of them. I picked them up and uh, like started. Because you were behind the scenes, you knew the whole operation. Well, that's all right. Like the pass it down, uh, the woman take over, and all the men just fall under, and no man there to take up. Man, <laughs> no, what? No, I thought like you crazy. said no man bashing today. Uh, no, that's not right. bashing, that's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> the his wife take over something like that and everybody just... I mean we have an educated woman that's clearly capable of so many different hats you even had so a cleaning service hats. correct Damn, right that was later nails, on cut that, your corns off your later. toes brush your teeth she know how to do it all yeah. that's why you need a woman like that that's a Proverbs 31 woman right there she know that's how to do right it all. say it again right exactly she know how to do it <laughs> yeah. all yeah yeah, yes. yeah. I'm gonna come in and pick up men that's down on their luck crying about their drug boss we gonna right. dust y'all off too. Come on, and I'm an Eastern star. Who will lead too, the people? So. Who will lead the <laughs> people? <laughs> I'm an Eastern star, yes. Okay. And so, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, um, and then also my thing was, um, I taught them because they were younger. They were younger guys too, and so I I taught them, and most of them had dropped out of school. So what I learned, I taught them. You know, I was teaching them, like I told her, used to tell them, I'm teaching you how to survive, whether it, it, not to sell drugs the rest of your life, but just to know how to, to, to survive. Right. And you, it doesn't matter what you sell, you can sell toothpaste as long as you know how to sell toothpaste. You know, you can sell that. You can make a million dollars selling toothpaste if you just right. know. If you know, it, it is a lot of bad breath mamma jammas over here, Polk County. <laughs> I just Back on that microphone you were talking about. <laughs> a lot of dirty mamma jammas over here, Polk County. Trust so I can definitely say, hey, I might have to look into that. Sell me some uh, some toothpaste. Some sip, sip. Right. And I yeah. used to just use that as an example, you know, and, and um, you know, a lot of times they had a problem with um, giving, trying, you know, kind of like giving stuff away on credit. Mm -hmm. And I had to teach them that, you know, hey, when you go in the grocery store, you can't go up to the counter and get all those groceries on credit, you know? So if you did, the grocery store is going to lose a lot of money. So you have to think like that. Yeah. Also, I taught them to, um, to, to give to the homeless because we have a lot of homeless people 
uh, not as much, many as in California or whatever, probably not. But we, at the time, we had a lot of them that hung around the project. And I would have them to give them money and stuff, you know, uh, for for a percentage of whatever they make. Because with me, they made good money. They didn't make as much as I did, but they made they made enough to give back or to give or to help somebody. Right. And so, um, so you so are already would, in a position training people for what you would later on do in life than what you do now. And so didn't even know that. You didn't even know. Yeah. It. But that's you that's just how I got it. Wow. That's how I got it. Wow. Sometimes you're pushing the position just that's to amazing. Put on the line. Let me train you now, just like it is now. That's why we independent. Anyway, now moving on from that. Right. <laughs> uh, so you and you so you had them out there. They 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 uh they they sold coke, sold weed, gave the homeless. No, we didn't. No, 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 no. So what? The weed we didn't was sell up? weed. The weed was over. The weed was um, over. Yeah. Weed was over. Um. She did not upgrade it in the game. Yeah, you can't you can't do all of that. You can't sell weed and marijuana, coke. I mean, weed, cocaine, and and prostitute women or whatever they do, or they say they can do. You can't do all of that and master one thing. You you could do it all as in 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 the hustling game. But what are you going to master? What are you going to mm. re- how how can you really capitalize? Because see, one is going to take priority over the other. So somebody's going to fall to the wayside. And so, so you got to focus on one. You're going to have to focus on one. Okay. You know, and so. <laughs> So, okay, what is the breaking point? We we done heard all the backstory. What what was the final breaking point? Hold on, wait a minute. It's 827, 2021. This is the first time that I ever got a word out of drugs. I just got blessed. (laughs) I know. She said, master what? I'm like, wait a minute. We talking about, okay, I feel spiritual about this. Wait a minute, man. I, feel, I think the Lord can actually use me in this area, man. What's up? No, no. <laughs> no, you know, you know, put on, on the back of weed, give it to him. That bring him in. That bring it. You know, it's a strategy. Bring it back, Scott. Bring it back. Bring it it's back. A, it's a strategy. I'm just no. saying. Some of them are doing it already. It was a principle. Like a lot of these things that it seems like you dealt with in life, it, it was for later on use. Like. How, just how to overcome, how to keep pressing, how to just be strong, how to lead other Absolutely. people. Like, so that's amazing. But like, what was the breaking point? You have been through so much at this rate, and now you at the top of your game, making. I, I watched this special like two million a month. Yeah, two I, million. I made, I, made a, I made a lot of money. I made oh. a lot of money. You know, I when, you got that, when you first got that million in your hand, how did it feel? What like did, did your eyes get big or? Like what did you no, just lay no, back with? Because, yeah, I'm I'm laid back with everything like that because um you know I don't um my mom my mom um we we no um, my mom kept us in church so I, I learned um not to uh with cherish money or to you know I don't I don't know it just it it just was the fact that I made a lot of money. Okay, cool. Okay, now I can do the things that I want to do. You know, I can help the people that I want to help. And I helped a lot of people. I helped a lot of kids that was in the project that didn't have Christmas. And, you know, I- I, You I, even I had a baby, a right? Of, that you raised? Right. Yeah, to her, you know, she was given to me. And um, so I, I raised her and from an infant. And, um, but also other kids throughout Alabama, I've, I've taken care of, I've, literally bought a lot of Christmas for a lot of kids and I've uh, paid a lot of people utility bills I've uh, you know paid a lot of people rent or made sure somebody had somewhere to live or stay Mm -hmm. so that's what I did with my money I I didn't just sit and hold it and look at it and cherish it or or nothing like that I didn't do those things because that didn't interest me none what was the most expensive thing that you bought with that money when you um, when you made it like I know you had like a you had a lot of cars, you know what I'm saying? A few cars over here, some mm-hmm. houses away. What was the what was the thing that made you not happy? The, the made what? That made you happy. Like, hey, look, I got this, this is mine. You know what I'm saying? I I got it with this. What was it? Was it a car? Was it a, a house? Or... When you got money, you just 357 with your initials again, great. Oh, now my guns, yeah. Oh, 
See, I knew it. There it is. Daddy planted that seed early. <laughs> hey, if I say they um, say, go ahead and shoot them. Yeah, you know, them. I had, I had, I had houses and apartments and different stuff, but I didn't never really stay in them. Uh, I just, I basically, my home, home, I always say it was with my mom or my grandma's or something because that's where I felt comfortable. That's where I felt like home was. And everything else is is where my drugs live. And so I can't live where they live. Right. And, um, you know, so stuff like that. But, you know, I bought cars. I had I, I, I bought a Jaguar and I really thought that I was going to like it. But I, I didn't. I felt like it was a little too old for me. So I gave it to my dad. And um, I had a lot of cars because I had a lot of trap cars. You know, like some people have. I had trap houses and trap cars. And so I um, I would use a car for very private as long as the police allowed me to use it. So sometimes it might be be a couple of weeks, might be a month or so. But um, but once they um, realized what cars I was in or car I was in, I would literally get out the car and leave it with the keys in it. I'd leave out walking. Are you serious? So it, oh yeah, plenty of time. Did you, you, know, you know, 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 ever do that here? <laughs> I've seen so many people driving car, my cars that I got out of. Yeah, I was I, like, okay. You, you ain't um, leaving nothing on the side of the road as of late, then, because I need to go find one of them Alabama Jones. No. <laughs> I'm just no, saying. I, oh, Lord. I just think we done went out. There no, you, you go. Right. Okay. There you go. Oh, that was the, that was a long I'd time. I'd be a little so. scared to roll up on the car just sitting there with the keys in it. <laughs> hey. I, I don't know. I think people probably knew by then that there's they've seen me in it, so they would know, you know, I guess. I don't know. I just let me ask you this here. Out. Now you was big time. Now do you have any police officers under you like that was like kind of helping you out and like kind of keep I did. I had I it was one. And um, that was in like, like 89, uh, 90. Um, actually, I already knew him. We actually went to Johnson High together. So I knew him before he was a police officer. And so when he became one, um, and what happened was when he became, when he got to be, got on, on my uh, payroll, as they said, um, they had, uh, the police had came to Bullet Terrace, but they was dressed like ninjas. And they literally was jumping off the roof and out of the trees and, and had, and <laughs> ninjas. So, yes, they literally was, they was just, they was dressed in black, just dressed just like ninjas. And the only wow. thing that they didn't have in their back was a sword. They had, they had shotguns. And so when they did that, they had everybody to get down on the ground. They were looking for me, but what happened, they had uh, they had been watching us. This they needs had, to be a movie. They, they, had, they had it in uh, <laughs> an empty apartment. They had been watching us and we didn't know it. And uh, so they thought that they had the right timing, which they almost, but by the grace of God, I had just stepped my foot into my aunt's house that was right on the corner and um and closed the door. And then I heard all this noise. I heard it's a boo, boo. I said, what is that? And so I looked at the window. I said, oh my God. I ran up in my cousin's room upstairs. My tower room overlooked the uh front street. Mm -hmm. And so and so they were coming out the trees. I said, oh my God, would you look at what the hell is going on? Ninjas and in so, the trees. Yes, and they was in the trees, but they were jumping off the rooftop too. And when they landed, they come out their back with the pumps and it's like, get out, get out, get out, get out. And so they had literally the whole sidewalk was laid out with people. And by the grace of God, not one of them was my guys. Michael had just walked off, not long, had walked off on the other side of the project. Kinky and went out there. None of the other guys was out there. And you I had just been getting walking. spared time and time again. <laughs> and I he had, had a plan. He had a plan. That's just how he did me when I was, you know, hoeing. But yeah, <laughs> he me all that time. And that's something. As, yeah. And so, so anyways, uh, that never happened again. They didn't ever do that again. And then um, that's when my friend 
he had come on the force with them. They were called the court unit. And so when he, got, but they were always messing with the, the white guys, the white police officers was always stopping. And they really was trying to get me. Every time they try to pull us over with me in the car, they just knew they had me, but they never did. Um, and so, but anyways, he came to me and he asked me, he said, um, he said, I can um, tell you when your name come up in the precinct, but you have to pay me. And I said, okay. That's not like a deal. So I would pay him every week to let me know if my name came up. So I would pay him every week, even if he didn't have no information. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To make sure that when my name did come up, that I would know. And then like when we were in the project, say for instance, we just get to the project, me and my guys, you know, sometimes I ride with them. Sometimes I hang with them, you know? And so if we pull up in the project and he see us, he would give us, give me a signal that you know they were out getting ready to do something and um because at that time we had beepers pages for them ninjas so, yeah, pop out again yeah. right yeah, yeah. And, that cold. right and so wow. yeah so he would uh let us let me know and that's how me and my boys was always spared and um and people people they didn't know no one knew that anyways until now he never but, got uh, he never got caught helping you out well what happened was his partner was a white guy and he didn't like Here we go. Me. He, yeah, he, he didn't, didn't like me. Go. Yeah. Oh, he, he, didn't like, he, he didn't like me, one, because probably because I'm black and then a drug dealer. So you want to have an attitude uh, like you hate someone. But anyways, he he was suspicious of us and he went and told uh, their sergeant or whatever. And then I and A. So we had, we went, they had an investigation on me and him. So we had to actually go and uh, before INA and, um, and because they had an investigation on us. And so what he told them was, oh yeah, they were coming out the hotel together, which that was a lie. And so that was just to get them started right, yeah. in, to uh, watch it. Yeah. And so we had to go through all of that. And uh, when they, when um, we, we had to do the oath thing and, and like a little hearing and, um, but anyways, it was nothing. I mean, you know, we passed all of that. Right. And then after that, I, uh, right after that is when I caught the murder case. That's and where so I was going to go. I start, then I started, um, I started really fading away from him because you already got me caught up with IA, you know, now I got this yeah. murder case to deal with. So, you know, I was like, okay, but you know, we still were friends and we still talk and, you know, occasionally, but not. Oh, but at this point, you no met a new man, right? At this point, we got another man in the story. What's, what's, I think his name was Tony from the BET Plus special. Yeah, well, Tony came a little, a few oh, minutes wow. later. <laughs> they they kind of rushed a lot of stuff, but yeah. Tony like when you got rid of one, of the... it, it was another one came along. Right. All the time, yeah, so they kind of portray you like you were just jumping me and like like it ain't nothing. No. Uh, yeah, and but yeah, but no, not really. I didn't really do that. It was like, okay, what they was talking about was how I used to treat guys, like make them sleep on the floor and all of that. That was like early on. You know, that was my favorite um, part. You made him sleep on the floor. Ooh, that was my favorite part. Yeah. Because Why would you do they, that? God, they couldn't sleep in my bed. Okay, they, okay, I, okay. They had to Respect. leave or Respect. sleep on the it. floor. I got and it. So, so they chose not to leave, so they had to sleep on the floor with my dog. And Get so it. that's how that was. And, yes. <laughs> and so, with my dog. God, yeah. Leave. I had a child, child, a black child, child, and he was special. But anyways, um, yeah, I did, I did that with several, several of them, or you know, I, I, I just didn't, because I, I didn't have time, and I didn't want anybody to think that they were going to get up under me close enough where you know what I'm doing, and right. whether right. you were with me or none. I always thought that everybody was against me, so I, I didn't leave no room for you to. Uh, set me up or know what I'm doing or know my whereabouts or or nothing like that and I didn't like them like that you know I just need you to do what you do and get the gone about your business 
Yeah, I know, but yeah. I, I, I wish Mel, I wish Mel Jones would have shot like that to my sky. You just want to go tonight. You about to around in mine. You just give me some calf, pal. I go and take my little black suit back home. I can see you on the floor, cuddled up, fetal position with a blanket. Yes, on yes, yes. I got you now. What else? I can see it. Look, and I can see the puppies then, getting around them. I was watching that special like, boy, that's, that's what I'm talking man. about. I'm a boss oh, yeah. around here. I need y'all to get good, goodbye. Yeah. So what it was it that made you say, listen, I want to change. I'm tired of doing this. I mean. The well, as a, okay, let me speed through that. Okay, so then I got charged with the uh, murder case. And and then, of course, I was acquitted on that because I wasn't even there. But anyways, I got acquitted from that. And then um, met Tony. And then that, um, all of that really changed. I was, because, um I had really got tired. And uh, during that time, I lost my mom and my grandmother two months apart. And wow. um, then when I lost them, then I didn't, I didn't care anymore. I just became, oh God. Oh, can you see me? You're back. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I didn't, um, I, I didn't care anymore. I actually um, just started doing stuff recklessly. Uh, everything that I taught my guys not to do is what I did. You know, I tell them, don't, don't ever do business in a, a parking lot, a mm -hmm. grocery store parking lot, or in a grocery store, or anything, because you can't see everybody. You can't see everybody in a car because people can be lying down low and watching you or whatever. So you just don't never do business there. And I did. And that's how I ultimately got caught because I, I really didn't care. Plus I had prayed, um, one long, uh, a couple of weeks before that I had prayed and talked to the Lord and told him that, uh, you know, I was tired, you know, I, and I wanted a way out and I couldn't figure out how to get out because, because when you, when you, when you work for someone else, then, then you know that there, there'd be a problem with getting out. But when you're right. the executioner, then how do you get out? How do you how do you stop being you? You know how how? And so I just didn't I didn't know how, and um, and I just prayed and I asked God for a way out. And um, when when that happened in the grocery store parking lot, they had helicopters, they had everybody. You oh, no ninjas that, this time. ATF. No 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 ninjas. Just no, regular no, police. ATF, helicopters, wow. they had it all for just one person, me. And um, so when when uh, Izzo got me out the car, asked me to step out of the car, I did. You know, I didn't run or anything. And um, I just looked up in the sky and I just said to, to the Lord, I said, this is not what I meant. And, uh, oh, you wow. know, and so, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, I wanted a way out, but this is. Sometimes you like you be not, tripping, man. Like dude, you gotta be specific like with your prayer. I do, exactly, and I said that. I said my mama always told me to be specific when I ask you something, and I yeah. was not. I just said yeah. I wanted a way out. I said you give it to me, but this is not what I wanted, <laughs> you know. And um, he knows his kids, and he knows that one thing I hate is being locked up. I don't like to be caged up like no animal. And um, but you know, uh, I went through that, and um, when I went to court. Um, it was a, it was a lot of confusion. My mom used to always tell me play, pray for confusion in the courtroom whenever I go. Make sure I pray pray for confusion. Pray, for just confusion. pray and fast. Pray for confusion because you he, put that reasonable if, doubt if, in there. That's right. Why is that what happened? Right. Right? Because I just listen. I just, <laughs> I just try again. No, let me, say, no, let me say this. Now you know, as a kid, it was around like nineteen ninety five. So I was probably like maybe eleven years old at that time. Thirty six now, about to be 30, 37 next month. Virgos, I see y'all. Listen, so um, that whole time I thought Johnny Cocker, when he tried to glove, he was like, if it doesn't fit, he must have quit. But that's I, right. Until I watched the other day that he said, I'll quit. I'm thinking like, okay, that's kind of dope. So I, all this time I've been quoting the man wrong. So now I, I had to go back and correct some people to tell them I was sorry because I was trying to get out of some, some things and, you know, that just didn't come off right. So a quit. I'm like, okay. So that's what they dad to do for you, a quit you of, the, of that crime because you didn't do it with that murder situation. So now exactly. they caught you. So now you're here. Now you pray for confusion. 
That's right. Reasonable doubt. One more time I said, my praise would confuse it. Oh, I ain't got time. <laughs> I ain't got so, time. So, so I did, and I fasted and prayed before I went to court, but still the DA, um, the, the Izzo, um, had, I had, I had ran into Izzo, me and my daughter and his family at a furniture store, the cop, right? Yes. That arrested me. And so okay. we talked for about four hours. When we finished talking, he said, you know what? He said, I'm going to help you because you're not even the person that they said you were. Now, and the cop um, that arrested you is not going to help you. Right. Wow. And so he went to the DA oh, and, and asked for five years split um um one eight months probation or some something, something like that five five years split eight months in prison yeah that's how it was and so he got mad at him for coming to him and asking him that so what he did what they did was they took him off my case which that had never happened before that the arresting officer comes off your case mm -hmm. and they changed judges because the judge that I had when she, she definitely wouldn't have sent me to prison for for no long period of time. So they switched all of that, which I could have, if I knew the law like I do now, I could have mm -hmm. literally won my case at that point right there. I never went to court on anything because you cannot remove the arresting officer from a case. Wow. That is against wow. the law. Wow. And so anyways, they did all of that foolishness. And so he all he said he was gonna offer me 99 years. Well, he and my lawyer got into an yes. argument. And and so there's all this confusion, you know. So they got into a real bad beat. And so he said, Well, I tell you what, if she take it to trial and lose, I'm definitely gonna give her 99 years. And so my then he put on the table the 21 years. And I was the first person in Alabama to get the 21 year sentence. Mm -hmm. And reason being is because what he was trying to do was, is to keep me from that, you know, you could get a split sentence 15 and under. So that they was about to give 20 years a split, start splitting 20 years. And he didn't want me to be able to get a split. So that's why he added that one to keep me from being able to get a split. Nasty. And um, straight nasty. And and you're right. But see what he didn't understand is that 21 is a part of God's numbers. He does everything in threes and sevens, you know. Uh, and so and therefore, and he he's an unbeliever. <laughs> And I'm a believer. And so I pray and God talked to me and he told me that no matter what they give me, I was going to only do two years. And so when they asked me, when I went to court, what did, um, did I have anything to say? And I said, yes. I said, it doesn't matter what you give me. I'm only going to do two years. Thus said the Lord. And it looked like the whole face turned pale white. I know. And so. You better speak a thing. And so, <laughs> and so I stood on that because God told me that. And I said, well, I, I, I could hear him plain as day. I said, okay, you said it. And I'm a, I'm a stand on that. And um, so I went to prison March of 04. And um, when you get to prison, they give you your parole set up and, and within two weeks of being there. So my parole set up was for March 06, which is two years. Wow. And so, so during that time, when the I first went, point. I said, Lord, I said, you know, I hate being locked up. So why did you send me here? What is it you want me to do? And, um, and so anyways, I had had surgery on my elbow and before I went. So that means that I had to deal with a medical. Well, come to find out the doctor, he, all he was going to give me was Tylenol. I absolutely not. I'm beyond Tylenol. You know, he said, well, you can't get narcotics in prison and all that. I said, well, first of all, I don't do drugs. And second of all, yes, you will give me what my doctor prescribed. And they said, no, right. blah, blah, blah. So anyways, found out that he was a retired gynecologist. And uh, so you really can't be telling me nothing anyways, because what what the, my issue has nothing to do with what your practice is. 
And so that's elbow. what so, that's you, what you, initiated the lawsuit. That elbow. That cat he went right. from cooch to elbow. You can't do that. Right. Well, see, he was the you doctor out of your jurisdiction. that they had right. That's two he was the doctor that they hired to treat the females, no matter what you go in there for. So he had this black book he opened up and he looked down and said, okay, this is all, this is what you can get. I said, that's not what I'm going to get. And he looked at me, I said, okay. So that's what started the lawsuit. That's when I started, I started the lawsuit based on their medical because of how they was treating me. It just ended up being able to help everybody. And so now um, they had to literally, uh, because I won. And so they had to start taking me to out to an internal medicine doctor. And so that, and that cost the state a lot of money. Yeah. And so they, you yeah. know, and so, um, so anyway, then they had to give me the medicine that they prescribed and I made sure that they gave me the narcotic that I took to make sure that, it, you know, we, we, we abide by the, by this lawsuit. And so I took it, even though I don't like taking um, medicine or anything, and I try not to take them unless I'm really in dire pain, but I True. took it to make it official. And so, um, so now men and women in the prison can go out to internal medicine doctors uh, if, if they have to. But see, you they don't want to tell the them street. that. So there's no way they're going to cage you up and you're not going to make a fuss and then raise some flags around here and get some stuff moving and shaking for these people because you were already doing that before you got there. That's wow. Yeah. Then they <laughs> killed a woman in front of me. And so I what? put that in the lawsuit. I contacted. Yeah, I had the feds wow. and everybody up in the prison. I, I called everybody in. They had feds. And, and everybody, and actually the ninjas kind of showed up at the prison because they came in and all, all black. No. With the dogs and everything. It was just, it was crazy. <laughs> the ninjas are back. They didn't show up at the prison store for the actual no. black. They didn't show up at the prison store. <laughs> right. I said, oh my God, would you look? And I was telling the lady next to me what had happened on the streets. And I said, would you look? They're here now. It's like they follow me or something. I said, but, uh, Anyways, we got that taken care of. A lot those officers got um, fired and stuff. Got a lot of changes done while I was there. Not a whole lot because you know I was only there for two years, so stuff you know it take process. You right. know, filing lawsuit it take process because they have so many times to answer or when to answer. So you know, time was running. So when I won the medical part of it, I made them also. I made them paint the prison because. The, it looked like it had lead in the paint. And so they had to get someone to come out and test it. And it did have lead in the paint. So they had to paint the entire prison, which cost money. Then um, at the time, I was not a certified uh, um, Native American, and but now I am. Um, but we had one that was there. Well, then certified? I started suing them because, because my great-grandmother okay. was was an Indian and so I didn't have my card. I didn't have my roll number at the time, but I have it now. Oh, and that, so, comes with a, that comes with some benefits, Sir Scott. It, wait, right. wait, I got no way. I got an uncle. I got an uncle that's no mm -mm. no 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 I got an uncle that's he Indian. At least they you know you say got Indian in, in his blood. Yeah but I'm oh, I'm we have a tribe and everything that I go to um we have a chief and everything uh so that, that I know that we do. I, I don't know about your uncle, but no, uh, wow. <laughs> so, wow. Wow. Okay. So, All right. All right. okay. So, so I made them. So after I want all of that, then I started um sitting on my bunk and I was thinking, okay, now what else can I sue them about? Oh, religion. Okay. So I started suing them about religion because one. Um, they didn't have no Qurans in, uh, it, see, they had two parts to the prison. The main prison is, it was maximum security and then they had the minimum security, which was another part, but in neither one, they didn't have Qurans and they didn't have, uh, you know, the hat and the rug that they, the prayer rug and stuff. Mm. And, um, and also the one Indian, they didn't have her a worship ground, uh, built out on the yard. And so I, uh, I filed a lawsuit against the, the, the uh, religion. 
And so I, and I won that. And so we gotta, now we, go. we got to tighten up. See, us Pentecostals, we make churches out of everything and kneel and pray everywhere. So we wouldn't want no lawsuit. They were like, no, nah, your, your altar right there at your bedside. See, at least your... I, I know. God, I've been to Pentecostal too. My, to my, my mother, my mother was, was Pentecostal and then holiness. And my grandmother um, brought me up in uh, Catholic and Baptist. And I, I've been to all denominations, actually. I've I've studied all religions. So uh, nearly all of them. I've been Hebrew. I've uh, been, um, I've studied Hebrew. Um, I've done study a lot of religions. But anyway, so anyway, I made them build, they had to build her the worship ground. And so they didn't like that because, you know, that costs money to bring in somebody dig and, and do all of that and build that for her to be able to, to worship. And, and then they had to get, you know, the Korans and everything. And then I made them take the salt out of the food because they all complaining about people with high blood pressure in the prison. We gotta get her up that. out of here. And so we gotta get. <laughs> and so we gotta go. We gotta pay. <laughs> and that's so, crazy. so I made them. So that's for the men and the women. So everything oh. that I done had to be for both men and women. You know, when I wanted and 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 I wanted through the federal courts. And so. Um, then my, you know, then, then my little time was running down, you know, my two years is coming to an end. And, um, but um, after I had won all of that and stuff, you know, you know, you get kind of, you know, in your spirit, you, you, you sometimes feel like, you know, eh, are you going to go, you know, because, you know, I started getting, uh, I guess, anxious, I don't know, or slightly depressed. And well, so one night, I prayed, I stayed up all night praying and I was looking out the window and um, I prayed and I asked God, I said, I told him, I said, you say that you, you know, you hear my prayers and uh, that you see my tears, but I'm crying. You say that you will heal me, but yet my body is still in pain. I said, and you said that you would deliver me and yet I'm in prison. And uh, so, um, that was, you know, my prayer all night long. And I just, and I was looking to the hills because where my bed was, the moon was shining right over the hills and I could just see the hills. And he said, look to the hills in which come with your help. Come with your right. help. And so, bye, 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 so bye. Hey. I was praying for him to come because I had got weak and tired, you know, of being in prison. And so, Anyways, um, that morning I said, well, when they turn the lights on, I'm going to read something in Psalms because I love Psalms. And, um, and so I went to open my Bible and it didn't open to Psalms. It opens to second Kings 20 and five, I think it is. And it says, I hear your prayers. Mm. I see your tears. I will heal thee and I will deliver thee is what it says. And I said, whoa, I said, whoa, you work fast. I said, I know I'm going home. I know it, I know it, I know it because you just confirmed it. So I'm good now. And so I went on by my way. Um, then they tried to stop me from filing the lawsuit. So they started holding my mail to the, to the judge and I felt it. And the, well, the Lord had laid it on my spirit that they was holding my mail from the, from the judge. And in fact, they were, I sent the same material back out through another inmate's name and told the judge what they were doing and they were in fact holding my holding wow. the mail and she sent down an order on them and um and so that's when the warden called me in his office and asked me uh was I trying to get him fired and I told him no I'm not trying to get you fired I'm just trying to get you to do your job and so mm. I said um uh, when we come in back gate you give us a pamphlet and that's the rules and the regulations of the prison. He said, yes. I said, so you have rules and regulations to go by, which are called federal guidelines. And as long as I'm in this prison, you're going to go by them. Everybody is going to go by the law as long as I'm in this prison. If I got to, you do too. Right. And so he just looked at me. But um, he said, when do you get out of here? I said, in a few, not long. And uh, I said, the Lord told me I'll be out in two years. So in a few months, I'll be out of here. And so he went on the computer and he looked, he said, 2025, that was supposed to be my end of sentence. 
2025. And we ain't even got to 2025 yet. And so anyways, um, it went on and, you know, I just continued writing and doing what I was doing. Um, and then when it came time for me to go to up for parole, uh, which was March 06, um, he, um, my dad, when he went to the parole board, they asked him, they said, they said, we have never had an inmate to have as many um, uh, high officials to send letters, commissioners, city councilmen, DAs, police officers that want an inmate out. We have never had that before. Said, he asked, asked my dad, said, who is carry on? And my dad said, Jeff, my daughter. And he was thinking in his mind, he said, keeping up all this shit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, said, I said, no, I'm not. I ain't kept up nothing. They should be doing what they're supposed to do. That's right. And so, you know, they were threatening to put me in lock up for filing the lawsuits. And I wrote the federal judge and let her know what they were planning. And um, so anyways, I told them that, you know, I would, I, they, they would be fired before my ink dried. So I wouldn't even worry about that. And so, in fact, you know, I made parole. And uh, something else that happened that never happened. Well, you usually get out in two weeks. Um, they send, send your papers in and you be out in two weeks. Well, that didn't happen. They did not, um, my papers never came. So they don't know what happened to them. The parole board said that they granted me uh, parole. Well, my papers never came. They didn't know where they were. So everybody now trying to see, well, how is this going to play out? Because this never happened before, right. you know, um, for somebody to make parole and then their papers never show up. Well, then in the midst of that, I get another parole date uh, that uh, in May, no, in June, 1st of June, I get another parole date. And that parole date is for July. That had never happened before. That somebody make parole and then get another date a few months after they've already went up. Never, never in Alabama history. Wow. And so then when July came and my dad went back, they granted again, because they asked themselves, why are you back? We already granted this. And he said, they won't let her go. And they said, won't let her go. They didn't understand. And it said that they can't find her paperwork, her release papers or whatever, say you all never sent them. Say, yes, we did, but anyway, they made a phone call to the front or whatever, got the paperwork, stamped it and said, release her immediately. And so here again, that's July. So um, I made parole March, which is the third month. And I made parole again on July, which is the seventh month, which means three times seven is 21. So I completed wow. your time. Oh, wow. Mm. I completed your time. And so mm. I got out. And uh, I was on parole uh, for seven years, and after, and then I got a full pardon. Um, after being out seven years, I got a full pardon, and seven then, years. yeah, and then seven years later, here we are in 2021. 20. Wow! So, all sevens. <laughs> and you deal with sip seven, ain't that something? See, I got hey. it. Hey, hey, I got you that. Hey. <laughs> See, man, that's that's crazy, man. See, and his yeah. what trips me out about about the, about people in church and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm still in it hardcore. They always say God can deliver you from anything, right? But when mm -hmm. I tell you about anything, you look at me funny, you talk behind my back or whatever like that, and just be like, Well, I thought you said God can deliver me from anything. Well, this is my anything. So your anything just really helped a lot of people today. It helped me because now I know for a fact that if I ever go out there and sell drugs. I know how to do it the right way and, that, and, and get off. So I'm, no, oh, no, 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 right you have in that area. Thank <laughs> you. Everybody have a backslide. Prayer. I know what, I know what, I know a professional. <laughs> Tiffany, you are. Uh, yes, man. Just go give us well, a I saw, I saw that you have a book that people can pre order right now. That's your autobiography, or what else are you working on right now? I'm also working on a workbook, and it's called uh, Criminal Reform. Criminal thinking reform, I'm sorry. And that it's to change uh, criminal thinking to responsible thinking. And so um, we're in the editing process and it should be completed uh, September 6th. So that's what we're working. That's what, that's, 
one of the things that I'm working on. I'm also uh, working with uh, with um, the Alabama um, Initiative uh, Program uh, to do a um, bill. I want to um, write a bill that's going to regulate the parole board, uh, give them some rules and regulations because they have none. They have no guidelines, so to say. They, they, you know, and then when a person is denied parole in Alabama, they don't have to tell you why. And so that, that needs to change because a person needs to know why, because how do you know what to change if you don't know why? You right. know, you, because people in prison, they say, okay, well, you take this class, this class, that class, and you do this and this for the parole board. So when you go up, you know, your jacket will look good for the parole board. And, and, and then you'll make parole. But then when you don't make it and you've done all of this, and then they don't tell you why, then what? Then a person that's in prison, they whole soul then, then just left their body for real. And, and not just them, but the family that's sticking by them. Right. You know, it, it's, it's the outside and the inside that you have you have crushed. It may be some young kids that's waiting on their dad or their mom to come home, you know, so that they can have their parents there. And then you deny them, but they've done everything that they could do possibly right in prison, but yet you deny them and set them off five years, not a month or two, not a year, but five years. They set everybody off five years. Uh, for instance, July the 7th, they had they, they reviewed 58 cases. Um, out of that 58 cases, they gave three people a parole and two people a pardon out of 58. That's, that's that's, and then they want to know why the prison is uh, overcrowded. Well, it's overcrowded it's the money maker. the parole board Right. right, and it's and it's overcrowded. It's because money of the way the judges is sentencing, and and they sentencing all these nonviolent offenders with these drug cases all this time here in Huntsville in in Madison County. I've seen where uh, just recently uh, two guys that was charged with capital murder got got capital murder dropped because you know the the sentence for capital murder is uh, life without parole or the death penalty. Well, they've gotten that completely dropped down to just murder and then and then they they receive a um 20 split five and then a guy that come up with a drug case they've given them 30 years to life are you serious yes so That's you crazy. rather for a murderer to get out and to run get around, back on the streets and do what they do get back on the street but a but a drug dealer is the most dangerous person that you ever met when in fact you all are the most dangerous people actually that's that's making right. this that's doing this, you know, because right. now if you would mess with one of them dogs that she makes you sleep on the floor with, you're gonna get some time too. Oh, don't do nothing to a little puppy. I, 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 I tell you like this, like, I ain't sleeping with a little flow. Okay, I got three of them now. You got three of them, I got two. <laughs> got three pits. You got three pits. Typical, <laughs> yeah, typical. Yeah. <laughs> that bit. But listen, man, listen. Your your story is phenomenal. And actually, my my, my best friend asked. He said, um, "Have anybody ever thought about making a movie of your story?" Yes, we're in the process of doing that now. It's being written as we speak. We've hey, already. Troy, there you go, Troy. Hit up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, Hit up, Troy. There's and, no chance, brother. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I've got got some other things um, that's coming out in the spring. Okay. And so yeah. So you do you have a release date for your something. autobiography? For sure. I don't. That's what I, I was talking to my manager today, trying to find out when we're gonna have that. So they're they're actually working on editing and getting it all together and stuff. But you have the pre order story right is now, so, so big. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> My yeah, story is so big, it's just like we can't get it all in one book and we're trying to condense it into one. Yeah, nice. but it's all good though. Well, we appreciate you telling a portion of your story with us right here on Blessings and Laughter. We really appreciate it. And I'm telling you like this, I got to meet you. When I get to Alabama in October, I'm going to hit you up. I got to meet you. We'll go grab- Absolutely. You. About the story or whatever, but, um, and also you get in free. To the okay. And I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna let them know you get in free to what? What's going on? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big fashion show. That, um, uh, one of my friends, do okay. 
And I hosted it last year, like right before COVID hit. And she uh-huh. came back again. And um, I that's my first time going to Alabama. And it was like, I was mind blown about all the African-American history that we would never learn in school. Oh, no. Oh, it's so oh we're awful. rich I'm with it. <laughs> rich with it. And I also found, you know, Booker T. Washington is my great uncle. Really? Yeah, so all, wow. uh, my dad, and my father, my oldest brother, my uncle, his son, his youngest son, all of them are named Booker T. So all that okay. into Booker T. Washington because the last names are still pretty new, according to uh, T. Right. T. So Taylor Farrow is our middle name, but it was his last name. Oh, wow. So that they all time, oh, wow. I was like, wow. So, I oh, so that's why he out here trying to get a card. Uh, hey, look, uh, hey. Yeah. So oh, where, where is the fashion is, show? trying to trace that thing back somewhere. Yeah. 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 So oh, where yeah. is the fashion it's show going to be? It's uh, in Selma. Selma. Oh, is it Selma? Oh, okay. Yeah. Been there in a long time, but yeah. yeah. Okay. I got you, though. Fashion you. show. We need Perry on on that. I love it. Hey, I, right. Right. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you. I'm <laughs> I love it. Really, Tiffany? Yeah. Really? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I I, you didn't see them that. pictures on her on her BET Plus special. Oh yeah, she oh, was yeah. she oh, yeah. was doing it. JC so, so like, before you baby. go, before you go, how, how old are you now? I'm fifty seven. Fifty seven, and she like this. Somebody doing something <laughs> for you because you don't look nothing like it. That means that you kept your life clean and God bless you through that whole process. You don't look nothing like you've been through. Never would even thought fifty seven. Get it? Yeah. yeah. I just turned 57. Just turned 57. That's awesome. In June, yeah. That is awesome. My, uh, one of the guys in my job, Pop Harris, uh, Herman Harris, he said, how you doing? He's a fan of yours. Hi. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> Listen, we got to go, but we appreciate you. I'm going to keep in contact with you. And we definitely, definitely. Book, as soon as your book comes out, we got you. We're going to uh, promote okay. it. And uh, yes. yes, this show has been brought to you by Capri Suns. Kool-Aid Capri Sun. Suck it until it's all gone. <laughs> so I don't leave no juice in there. It took you a long time to get that little tiny Capri Sunday. I had three of them. I had three of them. Also, guys, <laughs> those that are watching, my friend Cherry Johnson from Family Matters, Max played Lauren's best friend. This is her daughter's book. I have bought seven of them and distributed them out and also read them in school. Her daughter is six years old and she's a full time author oh, wow. at the age of six. So, y'all make sure y'all go. Some- awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what and make sure you pre-order Miss Perion's book. You ain't gotta wait for it to come out on PerionRoberts.com. You can that's pre-order right. your book that's and right. it's called Beyond a Dream. Yeah. So, wow. It was Beyond phenomenal talking to you today. Wow. Yes, yes. I've enjoyed it. Favor everywhere. Enjoyed it. Wow. So would you be willing to come down here and do a do a seminar if I get you down here? I would. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Good as done. Absolutely. Good done. Good absolutely. Is done. I said well, don't worry about it. Good is done. Got you. Absolutely. Oh, man, God play. is good. Might be able to do God the book signing down here. I mean, even that workbook, that is what, amazing what I, to I, I even just, think about I getting criminals to read how they do life. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're a criminal and you're the, selling, right. your, your mind is totally different. So when you have to come out into the real world and you're not making the money you're making, it's hard to get them to transform their thinking that's as right. to what can that's I do right. now. So that'll exactly. be a, even a, a more powerful tool as well. That's awesome. And so we're going to get it in all the prisons and work release and everywhere throughout the country. So nice to, to help people be able to transition their mind. Because once you get your thinking changed and transition, you can be able to cope and survive out in the free world. That's the reason why people keep going back is because they, they don't know how to transition um, from 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 criminal thinking to being more responsible or having a right. responsible thinking. So right. well, <laughs> we appreciate no, nah, we no, nah, that's all good information. We appreciate you know, This is Miss Perion Roberts, yo. Y'all give it up for Miss Perion Roberts, yo. She came by and chill with us. Give it up for Miss Perion. That's right. Give it up for Miss Perion, baby. Yeah, so we appreciate you very much for coming by. Listen, thank you for having me. Let me know. I will get it out there. Make sure I do it because I always keep my word. I'm not just okay. here because you're famous and all like that. No, we don't even like <laughs> that. We, we, we people, people. Okay. You know, people, persons. Okay. We love people, people. people. So we got you. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for right. having me. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you for real. God bless you all. All right. Later. Bye. 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 <laughs>
Tim, Tim, appreciate you, girl. Wow, man. Appreciate you. That story. Yeah. The ninjas and stuff, man. The ninjas. And I believe she also, you still sell cars also? Yes, I do sometimes, but not as much as I was. I done lost you now. I can't find you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I mean, <laughs> activist, business owner, book writer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so wow. I still do it a lot. And I have a nephew that I'm raising. I got him out of foster care. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I was on parole, actually. So I could have went back to prison, but... um you know, God favored me and the judge gave me uh, full custody of him. Because in Alabama, if you apply to get a child out of foster care or to adopt and you're on parole, they can send you back to prison. That's a violation. And uh, so wow. I was But you're in there to them. change the rules and get that activism so that there's some sort of formality as to how the system is supposed to work and not continue to just oppress people because there's no way out. So you keep right. doing the work you are right. doing. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Sleep on the floor Thank next time. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait to see you all in person though.